This is a story of, the, of an evolution of a demonstration in an activity, and it's also the story of how important it is to talk to other chemistry teachers and listen to what they have to say and get together with chemistry teachers and share ideas. For a long time, I did a demonstration and actually an activity, which I really, really enjoyed doing, involving cereal. Uh, I used to read the back of cereal boxes, and on the back of the cereal box, it would list the ingredients. And one of the ingredients was iron. I never really thought much about it. One day I picked up a bottle, a box of a particular cereal, and I'm reading the back of it, and instead of saying just iron, it said it contained reduced iron. Now I sat there and looked at that for a little bit. It's 6.15 in the morning, so I was, it took a while for me to start to register what that meant. But reduced iron. Well, I always knew that you used iron, three iron, and you, ion in your body, that, you know, and the hemoglobin and that kind of stuff. I started thinking about reduced. Well, if you reduce iron, then it's in its ionic form, two plus ion, three plus ion. Reduction means it's going to gain electrons and it's going to go back to neutral. So if I have reduced iron in this box of cereal, what I actually have in there is iron or as my uncle Cletus used to say, iron. And this, wait a minute, there's iron metal in my cereal. Well, I ought to be able to prove that or not by you know, taking a magnet. So the, as soon as I got to school, I pulled the magnet out and tried the flakes of cereal. They didn't move. I thought, well, maybe they're pretty small. So I took some of that cereal, dumped it in a beaker, threw a stir bar in it that has a magnet in it and stirred it up and wondered what I would see after about 12 hours of stirring my... By the way, these are so cool. Stirring my cereal, I pulled it out and lo and behold, I think you can probably see that. There are iron filings on the end of my stir bar. Now actually, if they were selling you the cereal and they said ingredients include iron filings, you probably wouldn't buy it. But they call it reduced iron. And it sounds pretty good for you. Doesn't sound like iron filings. But now I've got this visualization of the guys at the factory making the flakes. You know, and they're throwing in a half a ton of flour and some cornmeal and sugar. And then there's some guy over there with a shovel throwing in, you know, five scoops of iron filings. It's got to be in the recipe. And that's kind of neat. So we did this as a demonstration. I used to take it around with me when we did shows. I showed it to my classes. This was one of my favorite demonstrations for parents' night. Because you bring parents in and you know, have their favorite cereal set up in the front and show it to them and they'd look, oh my gosh, there's iron in my cereal. I'm never eating that again. There actually are some cereals that have so much iron in them that you can take the magnet, stick it in a baggie with the cereal and pound on the baggie for a while, take the magnet out and you will see little pieces of cereal stuck to it because you've got the small chunks of cereal that have the iron filings in them, and so it'll look exactly like that. Well, did this, I went up to Grand Valley State University in Michigan. There's a guy there by the name of Charlie Knopp, who's one of the great college chemistry teachers of all times. He's done so much for Michigan chemistry teachers over the years, and I was doing this demonstration, and I had purchased a gigantic stir bar. It was like $24, Teflon coated, so I could make a great big beaker full of this stuff that would be more visible for people. And after we finished the demonstration, Charlie comes up to me and he goes, Bob, Bob, I want to show you something you can do with that stir bar besides take the iron out of the cereal. And he hauls me back through three storerooms and he comes up to me. We get up to this thing and he's got this you know, $22 stir bar. He's got a bottle with some iron filings in it, and he slides the stir bar down inside the bottle. 
He shakes it up, and he gets this amazing three-dimensional magnetic field. I'm looking at this and going, this is really cool. I've been doing this with my physical science classes for 20 years, and every time I get the iron filings out and they shake the stuff on the piece of notebook paper we set on top of that magnet, the iron filings are all over the room. They're all over the magnet shortly after that. It's nearly impossible to get it out, so it's just fantastic. And I'm going, oh, except for one small problem. It's $22 for each one of these magnets. I don't have enough money to buy a classroom set of these magnets. But I thought it was really cool, so I took the demonstration into uh, one of our Chem West meetings, where we meet together in the Chicago suburban area. We have a group called Chemistry West. We get together about once every month during the school year, and we sit down and talk about cool things that we've seen or do in our classroom. So I, I brought this thing in and I showed it to the Chem West group with the $22 magnet in it, and I, I'm standing there and I, you know, got it going really well, and it just, it just, everybody's going, oh, that's really neat, but I can't afford to buy a $22. This was, by the way, this was 30 years ago. They're probably $60 now, or 20 years ago. Um, and then there's a guy sitting in the back that teaches at DeKalb High School, a guy by the name of John Tolls. And John gets up in the back of the room after I've got done with that and says, Bob! You can use a cow magnet for that. Well, I'm standing there looking at John. I'm going, okay, John, you've set me up. I'll be happy to do it. Sure, John, I can use a cow magnet. Where might I get one of those? And John says, farm and fleet. Find out the rest of this. If you feed it to the cow, they have several stomachs. The first stomach is lower than the other stomachs. So the cow magnet goes in and sets in the first stomach, and it's low down. It's also the strongest lining of any of the stomachs. So it sets there, and when the metal goes in, it just balls up around it. In fact, I've seen pictures now in books of cow magnets when they take them out, and they'll have all kinds of nails, and they'll have a big wad of metal on them. If that metal had made it out of that first stomach, it would have irritated the lining of the other stomachs. And we got some people from Wisconsin here, and they're all shaking their head, yes. Believe me, I felt like a total idiot when I first started doing this. But I had a good, it was a great story anyhow. Um, and so that sits there. You can actually buy used cow magnets, or you can get new ones. The used doesn't matter. They, at the slaughterhouse, they actually recollect them and take them back out and sell them back to you. Uh, now, it goes back to the whole thing of why did we do this? You know, here's a case where this is a, a group of chemistry teachers getting together looking for a better way to do something. These are really the best, I, I don't know how much they are now, but uh, the best $7, $10, $12, mag, $12 magnet you can get. They're better than any others that I've seen until you get up to the Al Nickel ones that are really, or the, yeah, the really expensive ones. But you can take this and you can get a little liter bottle, two liter bottle, whatever, throw a cup, couple tablespoons of iron filings in it, stick a test tube down inside there. Another thing I discovered with this, different than with a, the Teflon coated one, you better put something soft in the bottom of the test tube because the first time I did this, I just dropped the cow magnet in. It went right through the bottom of the test tube. So there's a cotton ball down there. Slide the cow magnet in, shake it up, and you get a really nice three-dimensional, I don't know if you guys, can you see that on the camera? Really nice, whoops, not with the white part facing you, you won't. <laughs> a really nice three-dimensional magnetic field. And that's the story of the cow magnet learning cycle that we went through. And it illustrates more than anything else the advantage of going to other chemical chemistry teachers and talking to them about the problems you have in your classroom and the things that you're trying to do and listening to them give you suggestions about how you can improve what you're doing, make it better, other ideas, even just getting a stupid joke from them, like all the stupid <coughs> stuff about cow magnets that you can talk about. Thank you.